Hello everyone, I'm Chuck Sissel, and many of you may know me as the CEO of the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame and currently the Artistic Director. Today I would like to welcome you to Conversations with Chuck. And my special guest today is the founder of the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame and also the co-founder of the Greenwood Cultural Center. She is also one of the most distinguished and honored African American women this state has ever produced. And she was one of two ladies who were the first in the state legislature as senators. And I'm speaking of the Honorable Senator Maxine Cecil Horner. And I might add, I'm proud to present my sister. So how are you today, Senator? I'm great. Good Having deal. a great day. Well, let's jump into this. I'd like to know right off the bat, when did your love of jazz and blues and music take effect? I would say, Chuck, probably in my elementary school years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think my love for the piano, it began there. Mm -hmm. And I think it started there. And of course, my dad and mother both, or our dad and mother both, loved music. Mm -hmm. Mother on the classical side, dad on the jazz and blues side. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be on dad's side, mm -hmm. the jazz mm -hmm. and the blues. <laughs> I dig. So the piano, and did you sing as well? I did. I did sing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I enjoyed singing. In fact, my dream was, and you fulfilled that one, but uh, <laughs> my dream was um, I saw myself being in New York City. Mm probably in some jazz club, mm -hmm. singing and playing mm -hmm. a piano. It didn't work out, but mm -hmm. that was my dream. I know that's right. <laughs> well, that was my dream, too, and I ended up <laughs> trying to make that happen. Now, let, one of the things I'd like to find out, growing up in Tulsa in the 30s and 40s, can you just kind of paint that picture really quickly for us? Absolutely. Um, those were wonderful years. Even though we were, we lived, I lived in a segregated environment, mm -hmm. The thing that we had in our community, we had um, great teachers, mm -hmm. great teachers. Yes. And so um, the, even though you would say some of the books or whatever were not up to date and those things, we had teachers who brought in the things that um, we needed to have. Mm -hmm. And so they did not um, accept the fact and never did uh, let us get bogged down with with segregation mm -hmm. is that you know you're here to learn mm -hmm. and you and we had wonderful art teachers mm -hmm. we had wonderful music teachers they were excellent mm -hmm. and you had to be excellent in that classroom mm -hmm. irrespective oh, of where you came from mm -hmm. and so I think that um, when I think of uh, it all began with I can remember in my elementary uh, school there was uh, Cleo Ross Meeker. Mm -hmm was the uh, music teacher there. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, they always had operettas and those type of things, but you had to perform. You know, you didn't have the sound effects, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But um, you did have these wonderful teachers who mm -hmm. made sure that, you know, you had every advantage that you could coming through the elementary mm -hmm. school. I, I will agree with you on that. It's very interesting how important teachers are to the the life of a child, a, a child growing and learning. I can look back as well and thank God for Alice B. Williams at uh, Charles S. Johnson Elementary, Opaline Bradley at Carver, and then Inez Black at Booker T. Washington, all music instructors. Had I not had those individuals in my life, I would have never had the idea to go to New York City. Well, and the thing is, is <clears> that <throat> if you were good in elementary schools, Wherever, you know, of course, at that time, we only had the two schools, Dunbar mm -hmm. Elementary mm -hmm. School, and at that time, it was Booger T. Washington Elementary School mm -hmm. because it was tied into the high school mm -hmm. before it became Charles S. Johnson. Mm -hmm. And But the thing is, is that if you were active and, in, and involved in the arts in either one of those schools, when you merged into Carver, then your reputation came yes, with it, yes. and Opaline Bradley fell yes. right in it and yes. put you right in, in yes. the right place where you needed to yes, be. Indeed. And it was, um, I think, the same with, with the band, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. uh, band teachers, mm -hmm. uh, students would fight mm -hmm. to get yes. the first chair. Yes. You know, I mean, it was, it was just an honor, and you could, yes. not, you could not be wavering in mm -hmm. any way. Mm -hmm. And these were things that happened after school, mm -hmm. not before, mm -hmm. I mean, not during school, but mm -hmm. you had to be there before, and you'd fight for those, oh, those positions mm -hmm. to be the first. 
So you're a graduate of Booker T. Washington High School. First class, first to, class? Gradu to graduate from uh, uh, the current school. Mm -hmm. uh, each class coming uh, behind us, or uh, uh, before us rather, thought they would be the uh, uh, one to graduate. E.W. Woods, that was his vision, mm -hmm. was to come out of uh, old Booker T. Washington that was uh, located up on uh, all in the area where you have OSU Tulsa yeah. and Langston and so forth. All of that was Booger T. Washington mm -hmm. uh, Elementary mm -hmm. and High School. Mm -hmm. And of course, when uh, the schools finally uh, separated, then uh, Charles S. Johnson grew out of uh, Booger T. Washington and uh, Booger T. Washington moved to, uh, to his new facility. Mm -hmm. And we were the very first class, mm -hmm. class of 1951, mm -hmm. to graduate from, uh, from the school. Well, now let me ask you this. When you came out of high school, you were planning to go to college. Did you go attend college? Yes, uh, and had a scholarship to uh, Wiley College in uh, Marshall, Texas. My dream was to go to Lincoln University in Jefferson City, mm -hmm. Missouri. However, uh, the fact that I got this scholarship, then my journey began there. Mm -hmm. And you ended up graduating from which university? Langston University. Langston university. Yes many years later. Uh -huh. And your major was? At the time when I went through uh, school, uh, business uh, was uh, uh, talked about, and so the teacher that I, and the professor rather, that I had at Wiley encouraged mm -hmm. me um, to uh, go into that, because, you know, my dream was music. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was saying, but if you are thinking in terms, and when they were counseling you, they mm -hmm. were thinking in terms of, mm -hmm how you can survive, yeah. you know, when you come out of mm -hmm. college. So she encouraged me, just based upon the tests that I had taken, the dexterity and the typing and so forth, and I think that came probably from the fact that piano, mm -hmm. and so it steered me to business. Here again you can see the importance of a teacher, a professor having an impact on someone's life. Oh, absolutely. The teaching profession is just uh, an incredible opportunity to bless your children. Especially if you get good teachers, and we had good teachers coming up. I followed you and uh, my sister and my brother, so I, we pretty much had similar teachers. Now, when you were in Tulsa, uh, gone away to college and come back, did you ever go to any of the uh, nightclubs that Deep Greenwood was so famous for back in the day? I knew of the clubs, um, and I, I remember uh, Clarence Love's mm -hmm. uh, lounge, uh, and you know, hearing many of the adults speak about it. However, I was fortunate that uh, our dad, uh, because of my love for, for music, was that once a year and every summer, I would get an opportunity to go to what was called at that time the Big Ten Ballroom, was, mm -hmm. uh, the building out there on East Apache. And um, I would, be, he would he would make sure that I had an opportunity to see a big band uh, perform. I remember uh, Lyle Hampton, I remember Buddy Johnson, I remember Arthur Prysock, Billy Eckstein, mm. those folks. Wow. And so it was just great to be mm. able, couldn't dance, couldn't, couldn't participate but in anything. But his thing was, this was an educational tool. If you're really serious about music, then I want to expose you to uh, some of the great performers that mm -hmm. have come through. And then so many of the performers, because of segregation, would come and they lived in the homes. You know, or they would, if they stayed overnight, yes. they lived, uh, had friends, mm -hmm. and they would stay in the homes. Because they could not stay in the hotels. There were no hotels available downtown. Mm -hmm. However, uh, there was a fabulous small hotel mm -hmm. and then some other entities around in the Greenwood Archer mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. But uh, the small, I guess you would say, was the hotel. Well, I guess you could say little did Daddy know that he actually uh, planted those seeds for the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame. Um, you know, being there to guide you and expose you to the world of jazz and blues and those artists that performed. Um, how did the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame come into existence. Where did that idea and that concept come from? Well, when um, the North Tulsa Heritage Foundation, which was a part of the, the Greenwood Cultural Center, um, 
decided to have um, Professor Savage, who uh, from OU, come and uh, do a book review on his book, uh, Cowboys and all that Southwestern jazz. Mm -hmm. And when he spoke of uh, the many artists, and I knew, of course, I knew of Earl Bostic, I knew of some, just in our home, mm -hmm. what I knew, Jay McShann, mm -hmm. those folks. But when he started speaking about all these various um, artists, I had no idea mm -hmm. that, um, that we were the diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. With Because uh, mm -hmm. most people thought most of these people, like uh, Chet Baker, everyone thought Chet Baker came out of California. Mm -hmm. And he was right there in um, Yale, Yale, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And so I got excited, and I went, and after the um, book review, I went to the professor and I asked him, I said, wouldn't it be great if there was a way that, you know, we could honor these people that, um, that have had such a great history uh, in the state yeah. of Oklahoma that is unknown. Mm -hmm. And so he said, oh, it will never happen. He said, because it's just not going to happen here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to happen. And, of course, I'm just that person that doesn't really take no for an answer. So when I went into, when I was in the legislature, and I went in to speak to the pro tem, which was uh, Bob Cullison at the time, and you can imagine, the pro tem has got his desk full of all kinds of papers, and he's trying to figure out the budget and all these other things, and I'm coming in and talking about how, how can we come up with, with, a, with something that will, will honor uh, the jazz artists that have come through Oklahoma, blues artists that have come through Oklahoma. And so, and I said at the time, we don't need any money, but, but, you know, is this something that you would be supportive of? And so it began there, and I had the support of the pro tem to move forward, mm -hmm. along with Professor Savage, who said that if you, if you can get it going, um, I will serve as a consultant to, um, to um, make this thing happen. And, of course, when it was launched the first time out, uh, people came from all over the state of Oklahoma. When our first meeting, the room was filled, and I think artists were so happy. And, of course, people who were in the music industry, they were so happy to come and, and, uh, and participate. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, it started, all with the book review, and from there, moving toward uh, legislation right, yeah. to... Uh, and I wanted it to be in Tulsa because mm -hmm. so many things are uh, already in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City, um, and uh, wanted it to be a statewide organization. And that's kind of more of an uphill battle because we're on the east part of the state. But I really wanted it to be located in in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So we did uh, accomplish that. Well, I tip my hat to you, and here we are, 23 years later. Did you ever think it would go this long? No, and well, what I really wanted was that I wanted it just to be worldwide. Mm -hmm. That was that was just my dream that you know that this thing would take off, and we would uh, just be known all over because so many people were not aware that uh, we had the kind of talent mm -hmm. in the state of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and still, mm -hmm. I mean. You can look around, you can almost mm -hmm. grab a singer or a uh, performer uh, to come and uh, uh, play in, uh, in Oklahoma. So we are mm -hmm. rich in that heritage, mm -hmm. is that they had to move away mm -hmm. to be able to Kansas City, mm -hmm. New Orleans, California, mm -hmm. East Coast, mm -hmm. even some abroad, mm -hmm. uh, are better known, uh, some better known abroad than they mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. uh, in our own country. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, when I was with Wynton Marsalis a few years back when he came here to Tulsa, we talked about the plethora of artists that come from the state of Oklahoma that many people thought came from the East Coast. That's Howard McGee, who's a graduate of Booker T. Washington High right. School, who was right in there with those cats. Dizzy, Charlie Parker, when they were creating the bebop sound, he was right in that mix. So when Wynton and I were talking about it, he was saying, what great artists that have come from this state. And Charlie Christian and right. Jay McShann and Claude Fiddler Williams, a right. great fiddle player, jazz fiddle player. And um, just a number, even you know, you someone like Kay Starr. Right. She started out singing with the big bands 
and she was a very close friend of Billie Holiday's. And when you hear her singing some of those Billie Holiday tunes, you think, is that the same person who did Wheel of Fortune? Yes. Kind of like yes. Patti Page going from singing in big bands to How Much Is That Dog in the Window, a novelty song. But um, nonetheless, I just want to congratulate you on the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame. And I also want to ask the Greenwood Cultural Center, your work with Representative Don Ross, that was a real important factor for the home of the Jazz Hall of Fame as well as the home for the Greenwood Cultural Center, which really is an icon here in Tulsa, that building. Oh, it is. And when we started uh, that project, well, actually, you know, the house, the Mabelby Little House, mm -hmm. started uh, with preserving uh, the Mabelby Little House. And then we went from, um, and that was a consultant that came out of uh, Washington, D.C., and he visited Tulsa. And he said, boy, this is something that um, you all have a really prize here. Uh, right here in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Duckery uh, was a um, person that said the house where that, where we are, where it is now, it had to be moved. And I think that's the reason it probably cannot get on the historical register mm -hmm. because they had to move it mm -hmm. because of OSU. Mm -hmm. But she said that that is, that is a home that should be uh, preserved because it was uh, connected to Vernon AME Church and uh, that family which is the Mackey family mm -hmm. hosted uh, many many teas and uh, this is where uh, so many people would come from all over the city mm -hmm. to um, mm -hmm. uh, take part uh, at mm -hmm. that home beautiful home mm -hmm. beautiful silver mm -hmm. and um, so the uh, house was was preserved and so from there, um, you know, they uh, said that, you know, Representative John Ross is, uh, says, I can smell the money. And so when he saw that there was some money uh, that was available, uh, there was a bond thing coming through, then he got in there and started pushing yes, for yes. Uh, uh, money to come and be supportive of maintaining and restoring that house. And so the visionary, I think, from him was, is that we'll create this this building, and so that the cultural center uh, building was um, started uh, started there, and so it gave me leverage when um, I authored legislation that I could go forward and say the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame has a home, and we don't have to have a building, we don't have to start because we have a place that we can be, and I I didn't ask them for any money at that time. I left the door open. Uh, because I knew down the road that we would probably have to have funding. But initially, we knew that we had a place where we could begin, mm -hmm. and so it began there. Well, kudos to Don Ross, Representative Ross, and to you. And one of the things that came out of both of those was two things, the Juneteenth Music Festival and the induction banquet gala. Now, tell me how did the idea to honor Oklahoma's uh, jazz, blues, and gospel greats. Uh, how did that whole concept kick off? Well, there was a staff person with the Oklahoma State Arts Council that had a grant, and they had, he wanted to do uh, a festival here in Tulsa honoring J. Mac Shan, mm -hmm. uh, Fiddler Williams, mm -hmm. and uh, Donaldson. Mm -hmm. And so it was It was an open and Ernie Fields, mm -hmm. and Ernie Fields Sr. Mm -hmm. And so this was outside, and it was a one-day festival uh, across the street mm -hmm. from the uh, Greenwood Cultural Center and the Heritage Center. And, and when I was there, I noticed that, you know, when they, the um, Arts Council staff person was presenting the... Um, the honorees, um, their uh, plaques and, and medals and so forth, that most of the people were just kind of having a great time and wasn't, they were really not listening, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. really getting a feel for mm -hmm. who these people really mm -hmm. were. And so I went to Betty Price and I said that, you know, if we could make this happen, um, I think it would be great 
to have an induction banquet and then flow into an outside festival. Induct them, have them come in and perform. And, but perform, you know, outside at the festival, but at the gala, then we would honor them and then people would be able to know who these people are. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a great eye-opener for me was mm -hmm. to uh, say that we had an opportunity to really educate uh, mm -hmm. the people here in the state mm -hmm. how great these people really were. Mm -hmm. And so to do that, I thought it was, it was worthy to have them in, mm -hmm. a, in a gala mm -hmm. uh, ceremony where they, we would acknowledge them mm -hmm. and then also we could flow from the gala and they could perform at the festival. Well, another successful concept. Um, and for those of you who may not know, Betty Price was the executive director of the Oklahoma Arts Council and she had a tremendous impact on not only the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame with funding but a number of um, 501c3 nonprofit organizations here in Tulsa and throughout the state of Oklahoma. Now I wanted to find out from you with all of this development taking place, the Cultural Center, the Jazz Hall of Fame, the gala, Juneteenth, what did your husband Don Sr. think and what did your son Don Jr. and your daughter Sherry think? Mom, what are you doing? What's happening here? Well, the fact that they're they're music lovers mm -hmm. because they came up and uh, my, my son used to say all the time is that Every week I hear Al Jarreau. She's in there. She's got Al Jarreau going on. And so, <laughs> I mean, they were almost brainwashed because they had to listen and you to did. what. Because, I mean, that was my, my background. Mm -hmm. Because early on for me, you know, since I had a love for piano, my first love for artists was uh, George Shearing, mm -hmm. Errol Gardner, mm -hmm. uh, those, those individuals mm -hmm. who, who, and because, you know, and Dave Brubeck, yes, you yes, know, yes, and yes, so right. um, when uh, this came about, I think it was just natural for them to say, well, here she goes again, because, <laughs> but they were very supportive, and yeah. uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, my husband Don was um, very supportive, mm -hmm. and he loved music. Mm -hmm. He really loved blues, mm -hmm. as you well know. Mm -hmm. We think about him and laugh oftentimes. Mm -hmm. When I hear certain songs, yeah. that uh, I can just see him making yeah. that move. That he had a special movement that he did with the blues. Mm -hmm. So his yeah, own. <laughs> that. Oh yeah, that's my song right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think. What else can I ask you? There are two more questions that I have in mind. With all of your success, and you have been completely blessed um, with your efforts, and you have been a a source of encouragement and support for many artists here in the Oklahoma area. And um, do you have any one or two special moments that will always just be like that night or that day or that artist really blessed my heart? Well, I would like to go back just a bit. And I think when you say one of the greatest things for me too, uh, you know, absolutely, love for the Jazz Hall of Fame and the music, but I think when I was able to uh, pass legislation um, and, and the bill at that time was called the Oklahoma Higher Learning Access OLAP program, which is now called, uh, I think, the Oklahoma Promise, mm. uh, but to be able to guarantee that any student in the state of Oklahoma would be able to attend college of their choice. Mm -hmm. Because in my home, um, that was, even if you didn't know where the money was coming from, that was conversation that was driven. You know, education, 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 education. And my mother used to say all the time, that's something nobody can take away from mm -hmm. you. You know, irrespective of anything else that you may have, you can't take that away, you know, and knowledge is power. And so my thought was is that if we can guarantee each child and to make, you know, to go through those various, you know, dilemmas trying to get it passed and trying to convince people on, uh, on the Senate side and the House side uh, to endorse this concept, mm. that was probably most rewarding. And I think the other thing is is that 
when someone comes up to me and says, I'm an OLAP graduate, it just makes uh -huh. me happy. <laughs> I heard all of that. Well, I want to thank you for this uh, opportunity to speak with you on Conversations with Chuck, and I have really enjoyed it, and I hope that you all have enjoyed it as well. I find it to be um, very uh, inspirational and uh, just informative, and I'd like to thank you, Senator Horner, for all that you've done for the state of Oklahoma and your constituents here in North Tulsa. You've been a great advocate for everybody here as well, and a lot of people know that you've done a lot of great things for many families here on so many levels. And so, if I may, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of everybody here in North Tulsa and everybody in the state of Oklahoma for your outstanding contributions to the state of Oklahoma. Well, thank you for the opportunity to come and have this conversation with you as well. And if I may mention just one little thing, and that is our mom and the fact that uh, even though she was on the classical side. I remember the story being told that um, as a young teen, she came from Muskogee, Oklahoma, and sang in the, uh, which is now the Brady Theater, mm -hmm. but it was called the Convention Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, her voice was absolutely excellent. Mm -hmm. She was a soprano mm -hmm. and a wonderful classical mm -hmm. singer. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I have to be so blessed and grateful that I had both sides. Mm -hmm. I had, I had her love for, which get, gave me a broader concept for all music, you know, and then having, uh, my dad would bring people in there where, you know, come up here and teach Maxine how to chord, teach Maxine how to how to do this, how to do that on the piano. So I was ter really blessed to mm -hmm. have that musical combination mm -hmm. that gave me a great ap appreciation mm -hmm. for all music. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with you. I couldn't think of a better mom or a better dad. Right. They were really, really cool people. So thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon with Conversations with Chuck. God bless and take care.